mark your pipes up. So you've got the cold, the hot. Now we've got a bit of a jumble of pipes going around here. So if I show you what I was shown. See this tea here? Now I got a video from Will with a drip coming off the bottom of this tea. I think we're getting somewhere with this. After a little bit of investigation, you can see the back joist there or floorboard there is soaking wet. I've been to jobs before where they've gone, oh, it was leaking yesterday, but it's not leaking now. I've said to Will, keep an eye on it. You can't fix what you can't see. So it's real world plumbing. Right, welcome back to the channel. Hope everyone is doing well. I've got a few things to mention before we get on with the video. First off, the big push for 20,000 subscribers. It's on, it's close. As you'll have known, I started the channel two years ago at the end of this year, if that makes sense. So I wanna try and hit 20,000 subscribers by the end of this year. We did 10,000 the end of last year, so 20,000 the end of this year would be amazing. So if you haven't subscribed to the channel, hit the subscribe button. It just helps with everything that's going on. It helps with the reach. And it's like when people like and comment on the, the videos, it helps the algorithms, helps push the content so more people get to see it. So there's that. Also, Sunday is the Halloween Trade Legends podcast that I recorded last week. You'd have seen a little bit of it in um, the last video uh, with Pointy Plumber and Craig Mitchell, property developer. So check that out on Sunday. I think it's going out at the same time as my video, so it'd be about six-ish. But check that out. Uh, it's a Halloween special. You'll have seen the costume that I was wearing. And to hear Pointy's story uh, about how he came to be Pointy Plumber and the whole uh, around him, it's very, very interesting, quite heartwarming. And Pointy even said afterwards that he's never really opened up as much as what he did. So that will be a very good watch, listen, however you watch it or listen to it uh, podcast-wise. Also, I'm going to plug it again quickly. The SLR... 1750 from Unilight. Um, they asked me to pick a light that I use the most, which is the SLR 1750. They retail for nearly 100 quid. Uh, put my code in MJTIFF at checkout. Oh, it's all in the description. Put my code in MJTIFF at checkout and you'll get this for 50 quid. They are selling like hotcakes because it's such a good light. It's power bank, mega light, etc. So there's that. Also, I've been nominated for a uh, influencer influencer of the year award at this year's energy saving awards there's a little bit about that further on in the video but again it's basically a public vote i'd love it if you would vote for me for that and i've run a chance of winning it and then down to london december for the award ceremony but again links in the description but that's mentioned further on in the video uh what else have we got i think i think that is it so Tonight's video is um, we begin the rip out of our little bathroom renovation for a rental property. So it's not a full blown bathroom job. It's just a little job and also a phantom leak. You know, one of them leaks where you go there and it's not leaking, but whenever you're not there, it leaks and the customer's like, I want it fixing. And I'm going, yeah, I want to fix it, but I can't fix what I can't see. So that is also on the video. So enough waffle from me. As I said, hit the subscribe button, get subscribed to the channel and I will let you get on with tonight's video. So Monday morning, new week, new job. We've got this little bathroom to begin taking out. So this bathroom is for a customer and it's just a rental property. Now, what she wants to do is try and uplift the bathroom without chucking too much money at it. So what I've advised her to do, we're gonna take these tiles off, retile around here, leave the bath in, it's quite a solid bath and she just thinks it will save a few quid by leaving that in if we can um, and it's not too much of an issue we're going to put a new bath panel on it move the shower from here internally so we can get a proper shower screen up new towel rail chrome towel rail going in floors coming up we aren't going to worry about putting a new floor in and then the toilet and basin is obviously coming out and then we're going to have two 500 units because of the way the door swings we've only got 500 and a tiny little gap at the end to get a new suite in there. So we're gonna have a small basin here, toilet here, little gap at the end here so that you're not wedged too far against the wall. Uh, but yeah, it's basically a little refurb of a bathroom. Um, I've got plenty of time to get done. So it's sort of a bit of a hospital job really. We can drop in, drop out. So me and Matty have come today 
to get the tiles off, get the panel off, because we want to check that we can replace this waste. And as you can see, there's not even an overflow on the bath. See if we can put a new waste and overflow in. Otherwise, we're going to have to switch the bath out, but she ideally wants to keep this bath in place. So, we're going to start by ripping everything out and seeing how far back we can go. Hopefully, these tiles are going to come off all right. Walls hopefully should be okay. And as you can see, this one's battened off a little bit, I think because of this. So they've bought that little bit of timber board or whatever behind there to bring it forward. So let's get stripping this out. So before we get too far with these tiles, we've obviously got to strip them off, but the customer wanted to check that we could put a new waste in his bath. I knew we could, but I just wanted to double check. So I've took the panel off. We've had to cut the old one off with a recip saw. Sometimes they're a bit stubborn, but <laughs> the old bath waste was just an inch and a quarter shallow trap into inch and a quarter pipe going out. But obviously, bath wastes are an inch and a half. Or back in the day, your man thought we could put an inch and a quarter one on it. But anyway, so we've got that out. What we'll do, we'll clean this up here and get it sil siliconed in, new waste siliconed in, because the old one didn't have an overflow in the bath so the new one will have an overflow new waste and then i think the woman's going to get the bath properly clean because she wanted to keep this enamel bath we're going to get the bath covered up get these tiles off get that shower off and you can see that shower is fed from underneath here so we're going to bring a pipe in the center of there bring it out and then that shower will sit internally and then the screen can on the front fast forward one full day and we've got this bathroom stripped out. Well, to be fair, we got it stripped out pretty quick, but then I had to shoot off and sort another job out. Um, I'm back here today because I've got some pipe work to move around. So I'll just take you through where we're at with this bathroom. So, obviously the basin and the toilet are out. These are the hot and colds coming out the floor. Now, what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna cut them off low level and get everything under the floor. New basin's going here, new toilet's going there. So we can sink them pipes under the floor. Hot and colds come round to feed the bath, all in 15 mil. Not had a problem filling the bath with 15 mil, so we're gonna get rid of that and put new stuff in. As you can see, there's even two isolation valves, so it's not even 15 mil going to there by the time it's uh, shrunk down in the, in the ice valve. Then we'll take a new pipe across, up for the shower. If you remember, the shower was there, we're gonna move it internal. We've got the waste out of the bath. We're gonna clean the bath up or clean it as best we can and get new plug and waste into there with an overflow that actually actually works. Now, the big, oh, sorry, towel rail will come off and we're putting a new towel rail on, alter the pipes, it's not an issue. Uh, now, the big issue, or the issue, it's not much of a big issue, this, board, this wall, we're gonna basically reboard this area. Now, I've never ever seen this before, it's just like wood paneling instead of boarding on that wall. But to be fair, it's absolutely solid. So what we're gonna do is put cement boards all around, screw them onto the back wall, fit them onto there, fit them onto there, and it will just make a much better canvas for us to get that tiled and get it done. So the tiles that are going on here are really funky looking tiles, so I'm looking forward to them going on. Uh, but yeah, we're gonna put cement boards all around and just make sure that area is perfect because as we said, the bath is staying. So that's a brief run through of what's going to happen. As I said, today we're going to cut the pipes off, get all the pipe work back into the floor, out of the way, and get the pipe work in for the shower. So let's, well, as you can see, the board doesn't take much getting up because it is completely rotten through. So we're going to replace these floorboards here and here. But yeah, let's rip this out and begin getting some new pipe work in. It's like I always say, mark your pipes up. So we've got the cold, the hot. Now we've got a bit of a jumble of pipes going around here. Uh, these are the two main feeds sort of coming up. So we're going to come off there, feed the basin, feed the toilet and feed the bath. Now these two, from what I can tell, they're going this way and then into here. Obviously there was an old airing cupboard before the combi went in and we've got these two. Now I think them two pipes coming across are them two pipes there, so they're not needed. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut them off here, bang two caps on, turn the water back on, and hopefully 
everything should still be working that's the easiest quickest way of finding out if we can just get rid of them two pipes completely there we go we cap them two pipes off turn the water back on there's water there water will be there obviously water at the bath because they're both being fed from them two pipes there so we know we can get rid of them disregard them two pipes come off there and completely repipe everything that we need doing from them two feeds popping up out the floor as you can see we've cut all that pipe work out now and we're back down to just them two feeds coming out there so we're going to run a bit of copper along here poke up here for the basin over there for the toilet and then what i'm going to do through these joists is i'm going to drill low level through here so that we can run two lengths of um, plastic just to get through here and then we'll poke up here in copper the reason being is the toilet the pan is going to sit here now i don't want to run the risk of running two copper pipes along the top there because when we screw the pan down there's a chance depending on where the pipes fall so for the sake of it bang two holes through there through them three joists and bring it up there and then we're back into where the bath is we can get to where the toilet is we can fit the toilet without a worry and uh, we'll bring it up for the basin we've now got the hot and colds poking up for the basin and for the toilet and also around here i've got the hot and colds coming up under the bath to connect back onto the bath and for the shower that's going to go there now before anyone says anything because i always get it if ever i do any plastic work it seems to be some people get the ump about it i've done loads of plastic in my time not really had an issue with any of it done loads of copper work in my time not really had much of an issue with that either so it's just down to pure ease with this one a getting through these joists you're not going to get copper to be able to go you know within these joists so plastic was the solution there unless we notched the top but as i said the toilet pan is going to go there also drilled the two pipes in for the base and that was easy to just hook two bends if you can see them two bends on the bottom of the pipe into two t's here because i wouldn't have got underneath here to solder it without getting this board up and i didn't want to start taking too much too many boards up when we was doing plastic anyway so we've then connected on Connect it onto the copper and then copper into the compression fittings. Again, people are going to go, don't put compression fittings on the floor. As long as they're all right and they're pasted up with plum blue, I personally have never had an issue with it. If you have, don't do it. If you haven't, crack on. Over here, I'm going to cut that isolation valve out for the shower. Someone's put it in and then bring the shower pipe out and the electric cable out. Then it is ready as good as for Matty to get in tomorrow as I said cement board up these walls and begin to get it tiled the, the tiles that are going on here are um, proper funky they're like um, Andy Warhol pop arty sort of tiles so I think they're going to look pretty cool we've also got to get the tail rail off as well and alter the pipes on the floor but the main thing today was to get the shower pipe in and redo all of this that's the shower pipe in now got that into position got the electric cable poking out exactly where we want it we've moved the shower as you know from there to there so we can get the screen in and just finish it a lot better so now that is ready tomorrow to have the cement boards put on and solid up and tanked and began to get completely tiled under the bath these taps are coming out the bath so what i've done i've just capped off the hot and cold underneath the bath then we can get to them as and however we need to when the taps go in but uh, yeah all the water's back on now I've got all them into position i've got new floorboards to go down once we get onto that little bit so for now on this job we're just about done i'm going to have a little bit of a tidy up clean up wipe down everywhere we'll drop matty off in the morning to start in here this afternoon we've got to go to a friend of mine who had someone working on his bathroom because i just couldn't physically fit him in and ironically enough he's now got a leak coming through his ceiling he's exposed the ceiling and from what i can tell there's a plastic pipe on a really tight bend going into a fitting and it's leaking from there so we'll take some fittings with us and hopefully when we'll get home we can get into that job and get that one done um, and save him from uh, having a ceiling come down on him right before i leave here i just want to ask a favor from everyone who's watching this video and that is to vote for me now yesterday my twitter pinged up 
and it turns out I've been nominated. I knew nothing about it at all. I've been nominated, I've got it on my phone here, the Energy Saving Awards. So six nominees in the Influencer of the Year category. Now I hate that word, influencer. I by no means think I'm an influencer, but I've been put into the Influencer of the Year category at the Energy Saving Awards. The public vote is all that counts, so make your voice heard. So what I'm gonna do is, I put a thing here of it and I'll show you exactly what it is and the tweet that I've got, but I'll add into the description below a link to vote for me. If you want to vote for me, it'd be great. I'm up against a tough competition uh, and it's to do with energy save knife. So what it was from, I think it was off the back of one of my videos where I flushed the heating system and got it running a lot more efficient. So in turn, it's been nominated through whatever channels it goes down. Um, but yeah, I've been nominated. I'd appreciate it if everyone just hits the link below and it's in the description and um, votes for me, basically. I might win it. And if I do, I'll film it all and you can see it, how I'm at an awards ceremony. But in my wildest dreams, I never ever thought that something like this would happen. But I'm genuinely made up just to have a nomination in a category with so many great people in the industry. So, hit the link below in the description, vote for me if you want to. That'd be magic and you never know, I might, might even fluke it and win. Right, let's get over to this job and um, see what's leaking. So, we've arrived at this little job that I was on about earlier. Now, I got a phone call a couple of, probably a week or so ago from a mate, yes, I know it's a mate, a mate saying he had um, someone out to do um, some work on his bathroom. I couldn't get here, et cetera, et cetera. So he's had, had the work done, but ever since then, there's been a bit of an issue. So if I show you what I was shown, you see this tea here? Now, I got a video from Will with a drip coming off the bottom of this tea. So I just naturally assumed the way that pipe's going up into the floor, that that tea was under a lot of tension. So I was going to cut the pipe, put an elbow on it, straight into the tea, job done because it was leaking off the nut. Now, when I've turned up, we look down there. I don't know if you can make it out. Right down the far end on the left, you can see that the boards and everything is sodden. Now, there's no pipes down there. We've got this one here on the right, this one, on the right going off to the right. So it's not that. Now, after a little bit of investigation, we've got a boxing running down here and two pipes under here. So, as we all know, in that little boxing, will be two pipes feeding the kitchen sink. So let me take you upstairs and show you this little bit of boxing because we're getting a little bit of damp coming through the bottom of this boxing. So this is directly above where the leak is now. Down the cut, I've wiped it up, but along this edge, water seems to be seeping in, which sort of tallies up if it's leaking under there Will said to me, he will turn the water on and after two or three hours, water starts dripping off that plastic pipe. So, that's telling me there's an issue behind here. Now, those pipes rise up in the corner there to the left hand side of that trimmer. So, behind here is the issue. But, what I'm quickly gonna do is just cut a little panel out to the side of the boxing up here because what we think is that beam that trimmer runs along there so if we cut that little bit out there hopefully we'll be able to see some pipes going up so we'll expose that i think we're getting somewhere with this after a little bit of investigation you can see the back joist there or floorboard there is soaking wet same as the other side now what was baffling us was there's no pipes up there to physically drip. There's a couple of pipes there that are bone dry, but there's nothing above it. Now, where that boxing is, though it was showing some little drips coming out the side of that boxing. So, what I think it is, and also what we'll now, we spent the last hour trying to work out is, because there's no other pipes around, and the water's coming out of this boxing, the only thing running down there is that saw pipe. Will then said to me that this ball valve drips. So I filled this up as much as it will go. That should be shut off now. But as you can see, 
it's still dripping. So what I think is happening is over the period of two or three hours, that system's filling up, which tallies with Will saying after two or three hours, the drip starts. So it's filling that system up, then it's running. I've put a little bit of tissue on the back there so that we can physically see it running. It's then just ever so slightly dripping through the overflow on the siphon into the pan, running down the waste pipe, uh, running down the saw pipe. Possibly there's a split in a junction or it's leaking from a fitting behind here, but it just tallies up with the way the water's showing there, the way the damp is on the, the joists and the floorboards there, and with that constantly running. So if we flush it, it will replicate it. <coughs> Sort of dripping, but to a more, more volume going through. So I'd like to think now that valve downstairs, that fitting could possibly be leaking a little bit. So this is going to be one of them pain in the ass jobs. Will's just said what a pain in the ass. It's going to be one of them pain in the ass jobs that we can't, when you can't locate where a leak's coming from, you can't fix it. I've been to jobs before where they've gone, oh, it was leaking yesterday, but it's not leaking now. You can't fix what you physically can't see. So we've gone through what the various things that we think it might be. I've said to Will, keep an eye on it. If that fitting starts to drip, not the fitting, if the pipe going into that fitting starts to drip, up, go upstairs, monitor where the level is in the toilet and keep an eye on things. So he's going to keep an eye on it for a few days, live with it, and hopefully give a bit of feedback so we can possibly work out exactly what is going on. But these are some of them jobs that you you can't fix. You can't fix what you can't see. So we're just gonna have to keep an eye on it. But it's real world plumbing. So hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, drop me a comment below and let me know what you think this possibly could be. Because nine times out of 10, I get bombarded with some great comments saying, try this, try this, do this, do that at the minute. We're banging our head against the wall, so get subscribed, hit the like button, drop me a comment. <laughs>